from Cologne. St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Church. <clears throat> Thank you. Let us pray. O most awesome and benevolent creator, we thank you for bringing us to the dawn of another new year. We also thank you for illumining the world by your grace and sending us exemplary men and women to act as beacons leading us towards a brighter future and closer to your love. Touch the hearts of our leaders and guide their discussions here this evening. Help them and extend your comfort and assistance to those who are most in need of your compassion. We pray that you will forever bless our Wilmington community and our elected servants with peace and prosperity in this year and for generations to come. We, the faithful of the Port City, ask this through the intercessions of St. Nicholas and of all the saints, now and forever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Father Quan, I thought you would have brought some of the uh, sappos here tonight. Uh, normally, most times we do. Okay. Times we do. Thank you. Okay, um, next is the approval of the consent agenda. Move the consent agenda. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, number six is consideration of American Tort Month Proclamation. Have anybody's Don Campbell? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your commissioners, thank you for having me this evening. I do appreciate your willingness to consider the Heart Month proclamation. I want to share some important information with you. Every 33 seconds, someone in the United States dies from cardiovascular disease. Here in New Hanover County, one out of every five deaths is related to heart disease. Heart disease costs our economy billions of dollars on an annual basis. February is a month when we can all come together, recognize the importance of heart and cardiovascular disease has on our society. We can focus on educating individuals to seek medical care, to receive the treatment that they need, to reduce the significance of the burden on, on our community. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Campbell, thank you for your presentation of this proclamation. You know, it was just over a year ago that we lost Commissioner Deb Hayes um, to heart disease, to a heart attack. Mm -hmm. Understand that women are more prone to heart attacks than men. And it's so important that every citizen in our community and beyond um, recognize the need to take care of themselves physically, uh, to get annual physicals, uh, to monitor their blood pressure, you're taking medications, take them regularly to make sure that you're protecting your heart. Um, and again, as we sit here and I'm you know, thinking about the fact that just over a year ago, we lost a fellow commissioner to this disease. And so this is hitting home for me today. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Absolutely. And Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we adopt the proclamation that's presented, read. Second. Second. Or I guess we need to read the proclamation too, don't we? All in favor say aye. 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 Would you, would you mind if I read the proclamation, Mr. Chair? I'm sorry, I don't think we read it, did we? Yeah, New York County Board of Commissioners American Heart Month Proclamation, whereas American Heart Month observed every February since 1963 is a vital period raising awareness about heart and cardiovascular disease. And whereas heart and cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death among North Carolinians with notable racial disparities in death rates. And whereas New Hampshire County strategic plan outlines a goal for every resident to have access to the services that support their physical health and mental well-being and reducing death from cardiovascular disease is a key target for success. And whereas preventative measures including regular exercise, a balanced diet, or routine medical checkups play a crucial role in maintaining heart health. And whereas public awareness campaigns and education initiatives are instrumental promoting heart healthy lifestyles and reducing the risk of cardiovascular diseases and whereas a deliberate effort must be undertaken to achieve better heart health for all. Closing the racial gaps in cardiovascular disease and addressing the unequal burden of heart disease among women. And whereas American Heart Month is an opportunity for organizations and health practitioners in New York County 
to promote awareness of screening, increase access to screenings, and advocate for those who are at risk of and diagnosed with heart or cardiovascular disease. Now, therefore, be proclaimed by the New Orleans County Board of Commissioners that February 2024 will be recognized as American Heart Month in New Orleans County. Again, I move the proclamation. Next is consideration of temporary waiver of hourly fees for New Hanover County parking deck during the shutdown of the bridge. Mr. Brady. Good afternoon. At the last commissioner meeting, Commissioner Scalise proposed the idea of waiving the hourly fees to the deck as an accommodation and to mitigate the impact of the uh, closure of the bridge. I've just got a few additional facts for your consideration before you discuss it. <clears throat> On average, we collect about $5,000 in fees at that deck. Uh, scheduling that out over the proposed bridge closure, which is scheduled to end May the 23rd, would result in a waiver of approximately $70,000 in uh, total fees. Uh, the deck has a, a, a specific allotment of spots for monthly parkers, and that's certain specific allotment for hourly parkers. So if the deck were to become popular because of this and um, uh, have a lot more hourly parkers than they normally have, they would you know, hit, hit their allotment and get cut off and therefore potentially mitigate the impact on the monthly parkers. They would still have their allotted number of spots. Um, staff would suggest if this were to pass that the um, free parking be for a period of 12 hours at a time in any, any one given day. And then as noted in the proposed motion and the agenda item, uh, it's to end May the 23rd, but in case there were any potential delays, we've proposed in there that it go till July 23rd without any further commissioner action required if, if it is indeed passed. And those were the prepared comments I had to, this time. I've got Sarah here to help with any other parking lot issues as well. Sure, Mr. Chairman. Eric, Sarah, uh, there was some question at the agenda review about whether or not businesses who have long-term parking arrangements with us might find this proposal for hourly parking objectionable. Did anyone reach out to us to express any such objection? They did not. Okay. Uh, I'm happy to uh, make a motion, go ahead and go into discussion. I think that this is a good gesture for us to make to the people and businesses of downtown. It's going to be uh, somewhat of a difficult time, as we have acknowledged repeatedly in the lead up to the bridge closure. Um, and as, as such, if it, the timing is appropriate, I'm, I'm happy to go ahead and make a motion and we can have discussion or we can go ahead and have discussion first, whatever your preference is, Mr. Chairman. Any, any questions? Well, I think there's discussion I uh, the thoughts that I had uh, this past Thursday still stand I, I see that it it will has the potential to create confusion among those people and those businesses who have uh, passes that they give to their employees uh, when they find that they're continuing to pay for parking uh, when people parking literally next to them are in for free and so I, I asked the question of our it's the young woman who was here uh, with the parking company there. Yeah. She was not able to attend today. What we're going to do and how to answer the question that comes up and says, you know, uh, hey, I have a half a dozen parking passes for my employees. Uh, I want a, a waiver for the time period that you're waiving the hourly rates for. How do we handle that conversation? Because to me, that sounds like a pretty fair, uh, you know, a pretty fair deal, you know, but I, the way it's written right now or the way it's described, that would not be the case. I think there's the potential for them to say that. Um, as we discussed on Thursday, there is some more certainty being a monthly parker. There's a certain number of spots and those are not being de de decreased. 
And so you've got a certain, certain, a certain amount of additional certainty by having the monthly spot versus the hourly if it were to get crowded. And then also if they were to, you know, um, I think that's probably the best answer. They've got certainty in, in parking. I think my response, I'm just trying to put myself in the position of a you know, business owner. I'd say, you know, uh, I was there supporting you before and I'll be there afterwards as well. So my loyalty is there. Why am I not being included in this, you know, waiving of fees for, um, you know, up to six month period? Again, I think it's a legitimate. It, it feels like we're picking some to benefit and some to not benefit. And when I combine that with the loss of income to the county, uh, you know, over that period, it may not seem like a lot, but in uh, mine and my wife's checkbook, uh, last time I saw 75 grand rolling through, I, I, that's, that's a lot of money. Uh, I still think so. Maybe I'm just a little old school in that. And as we roll into a budget period here, as was mentioned by Commissioner Barfield uh, last Thursday, we're going to be scrambling for every, uh, every dollar that we can get. So I applaud the creativeness of this, uh, Commissioner Scalise, and, I, and I, I see you know, the great work that you've done with WDI uh, downtown, you know, focusing on the Central Business District. I understand the motivation. I, I just, I just, you know, I don't, I don't think this is the, the right one. Respect and that, sir. I will note that I have spoken with any number of downtown businesses. They've reached out to me to express their support for this. I don't know if you've spoken with downtown business owners and they've told you that they oppose it. I wish that they would have called in to let us know that that was the case because not one person has told me that they oppose this proposition. Mm -hmm. Everyone that's reached out to me has applauded the creativity and said that it will help to bring people into downtown to support our local businesses, our restaurants, our shops. So it's for that reason that I'm going to make a motion that we approve a waiver of the hourly parking deck fees at the county's parking deck during the, during the days that lanes of the Cape Fear Memorial Bridge are closed. That is to include up to May 23rd, 2024, or up to July 23rd, 2024, if that work is extended. And as uh, Mr. Cradle referenced, I believe that the parking should be allotted for a period of 12 hours as discussed. Motion been made. Is there a second? I second it. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion falls. <clears throat> Number nine is a Rezoning by Cindy Wolf with Design Solutions, applicant to rezone nine. Number eight. Yes. Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm sorry, I would like to have the matter of the Career Readiness Academy at Mosley and potential newcomer school resolution heard, and I understand that that can be voted down similarly as this one that we just addressed was, but I, I think that it should be heard. I apologize for skipping that. I'm Thank you, so sir. Sorry. Um, I'll, I won't belabor the point. I've discussed this. I've written an op-ed. Um, the community can look to my comments on this subject. I make a motion that we pass the following resolution entitled Career Readiness Academy at Mosley and Potential Newcomer School Resolution. Whereas the New Hanover County Board of Commissioners has a broad interest in the overall education of the citizens of New Hanover County and whereas the New Hanover County Board of Commissioners appropriates from its revenues a significant portion of the operating budget of the New Hanover County Schools with such amount exceeding 94 million in the current fiscal year. And whereas the New Hanover County Board of Commissioners periodically approves the process for the issuance of debt in the name of the county and provides for its repayment from county revenue to, ca to benefit capital improvements for the New Hanover County Schools with 273 million in such debt issued since 2006. And whereas the New Hanover County Board of Commissioners is aware that the administrative staff of the New Hanover County Schools has previously announced a plan to close the Career Readiness Academy at Mosley at the conclusion of the current 24 year and may also recommend the opening of a newcomer school. And whereas the New Hanover County Board of Education is responsible for setting the policies of the New Hanover County Schools. And whereas the New Hanover County Board 
of Commissioners believes that it is, in, it is in the best interest of the citizens of New Hanover County for the New Hanover County Schools to continue to offer the Career Readiness Academy at Mosley and that a newcomer school is not in the best interest of the citizens of New Hanover County. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the New Hanover County Board of Commissioners appeals to the New Hanover County Board of Education to continue offering the Career Readiness Academy at Mosley and to not establish a newcomer school adopted this fifth day of February 2024. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for your consideration. Um, yeah, I'd like to make a comment, and I'll, I'll second um, Commissioner Scalise's motion on this item. Um, as a mother of a son with autism, an adult son now, that who went through New Hanover County Schools, there are certainly special needs in our school system, and um, I think we need to um, continue to support those students. Um, I know my son got a lot of help in the school system, um, and, and quite frankly, just as I might add, when these folks graduate from high school, there's not a lot of help out there for adult uh, children with these handicaps like autism and, and things like that, but their success is often measured by what they get in the school system. So I will second your motion and support that. Thank you. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. I, uh, I uh, understand and support uh, the thoughts of Commissioner Pierce and Commissioner Scalise on the Career Readiness Academy of Mosley. Uh, you know, in looking into it has done a, a lot of good but I also want to back that up quickly that this is a New Hanover County Board of Education decision. Clearly, in their, as a, their own elected board uh, by the citizens of New Hanover County. So I don't want to jump in their way uh, or by any means take away from uh, what their deliberations are. But it's the part about the newcomer school, which I know has received a lot of uh, discussion within the community and uh, I had the opportunity over the last couple of days to uh, have a conversation with Maurice Green, uh, who is the superintendent of schools of Guilford County, uh, where there are uh, two newcomer schools, um, and, and had a chance to find out what the Sam Hill, this was, you know, what, what was it about? And I was uh, certainly educated. Uh, quickly pointed out they were addressing an issue that was already present in their school system which is about 95,000 uh, students in comparison to our you know, 25,000 here, excuse me, 69,173 in Guilford County. Uh, it, the goal of the newcomer school is to transition every student out of there within a year to a year and a half to put them into, into mainstream them. And by uh, pulling them out or not having them go into the mainstream classrooms, uh, mainly with uh, language issues, of which they come from all over the world. Uh, they had uh, a good percentage of Asian, as well as uh, uh, students from uh, South and Central America, uh, and the Middle East as well. And that by helping them with their language in the newcomer school to transition, it benefited the class that was moving ahead without them in their sixth, seventh, or eighth grade class, and then able to mainstream them back in once they had this tool, essentially, is what he referred to it uh, multiple times. He saw it as a tremendous success uh, for the Guilford County school system. So I, I know there'll be you know, some opposition uh, on there. I, I asked him also about uh, the immigrant and refugee population of Guilford County, and he said, yeah, yes, there, there are a lot. Uh, of immigrants in there. As he pointed out, there's a lot of immigrants throughout North Carolina. Uh, and he felt this is just simply a way of addressing a, an issue that was happening already in their schools and a creative idea that was working splendidly to help advance those students who didn't take part in it as well as those students who did. So I, I thought I'd pass on some of that education because I think it got, I don't know, I certainly didn't understand what a newcomer school was. And I would hate to say, uh, see us um, put up a, a strong resistance or a ban, essentially, on newcomer schools when we didn't understand fully what it was uh, and the potential benefit that it could have. Just wanted to make those comments uh, before moving forward with the. Mm -hmm. I already made my comments. I don't have anything further. Thank you, sir. I, I, I would just like for everybody to know that <clears throat> a, a newcomer school means that our taxes are going to go up. And if everybody's okay with that, I am. But your taxes are going to go up. 
is it extra? Am I right, Rob? Well, you know, again, this is a school board issue, and whether they would uh, de dedicate a portion of the school. Us for the money. <laughs> well, that's true. They'll ask that in their in their whole budget. Whether it would mean an increase or uh, being able to absorb it, I, I don't know, Bill. Is what the question is. Yeah. Well, I, I don't think they can absorb it, mm -hmm. and so it would mean a tax increase to our citizens, and I'm mm -hmm. I'm not on board for that. I'm sorry. Bill, if it, if it would mean a, a better education, um, and it's a, a creative way of providing that a quality education in our school system, I think that's what turns my head. And I just got a little bit of an education on it. I think it's something that we just shouldn't just throw out uh, in a knee-jerk reaction. Well, I don't either. But I, I, I also, I'm not against educating everybody in the world. But New Hanover County doesn't need to pay for all of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm against us having to raise taxes. Somebody needs to help us with it. If we're letting all these people in, mm -hmm. we need some help. I guess the point that Mr. Green made to me is they're already here. And in some cases may already be affecting classrooms that if they had the opportunity to work uh, specifically with uh, you know, multilinguists, uh, in a separate setting and then mainstream them back into that class that it benefits the children and it benefits the teachers and the entire community. But it's going to take money to do that. Okay. I, it's going to take money to do it. Mm -hmm. I just want everybody to know that. Mm -hmm. Mr. Any Chairman? Discussion? I guess I've been doing this long enough to know that there's really no direct correlation with adding new classes to the tax rate. I mean, it's, it's really a school board decision in terms of what their priorities are, and they've not determined what those priorities are yet. So to simply make a blank statement that if you do this, it's going to cause your taxes to go up, to me, is misleading at best. Um, the school board may decide to delay capital projects, uh, but at this point, the school board has said we're not doing this. <coughs> so for me, it's a moot point. Um, you know, I, I'm in support of keeping Mosley open. Uh, but for personal reasons and selfish reasons. I actually went to that school, but when I went there, it was called William H. Blunt. My father also went to William H. Blunt. And my first grade teacher actually taught my, my dad there, and she had what I call an aerodynamic paddle. And what that means is that it had holes in it so that when she swung it to my behind, nothing slowed it down from hitting my behind. I used to walk to, I grew up in East Wilmington, so I used to walk to that particular school. Uh, you know, for me, the newcomer school is, is, is a non-issue, uh, in my opinion. Uh, whether we vote the resolution up and down, I'm fine with the resolution, the way that it's read, um, because it, it's a moot point. Uh, the school board has made a decision, and the reality is the school board is an elected <laughs> and it's their job to make decisions that best fit the school system, not the board of commissioners. I know for several years we have weighed in as a board outside of our lane, so to speak, and have influenced things within the school system or tried to influence things outside of our lane. And again, all we're doing is saying we, have, we agree with what the school board has already said they're going to do, which is not do X, Y, and Z. So I'm good. So, so There's a motion. Is there a second? I already second it. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Yeah, I'm not following the rules like Mr. Barfield said. So, <coughs> number nine is a public hearing resenting request Z23-23 request by Cindy Wolf for Design Solutions, applicant to rezone nine parcels totaling approximately 7.28 acres of land located at the 7200 block of Carolina Beach Road between North and South Seabreeze Roads from R15 residential to CCD, CB community business for a commercial business park consisting of 28,300 maximum square feet of general retail, restaurant, convenience store, and fuel pumps, and other limited uses. 
this is a public hearing. We will hear a presentation from staff. Then the applicant will, the applicant and only opponents will each be allowed 15 minutes for their presentation and an additional five minutes for rebuttal. Staff presentation. Thank you, Chair, members yes, of the sir. board. The applicant is requesting to rezone approximately 7.28 acres from the R15 residential district to a conditional CB community business district for a maximum 28,300 square foot commercial service center. The site is located at 7611 Carolina Beach Road and was originally zoned R15 in 1971. At the time, the purpose of the R15 district was to ensure that housing on private wells and septic was developed at low densities. Since that time, private water and sewer services have become available to the surrounding area through aqua. There is a recommended condition requiring connection to the aqua system. The parcels are located within the historic Seabreeze neighborhood. Established in the mid-1920s, this area was a prime vacation resort for African Americans within southeastern North Carolina from the 1930s through the 1950s. The aerial photography shows the site is bordered by residential on all sides and across Carolina Beach Road, though North and South Seabreeze Road buffer the site from residential to the North and South. Here is an aerial photo of the site with images of the property from different angles. Here's an example of what you might see in an R15 district and an example of other residential development in the Seabreeze area. Here are examples of mixed use commercial centers showing a business plaza along with a fast food restaurant with drive through in the background and medical and dental offices with a connected restaurant. The applicant's proposed concept plan shows an example of what the mixed use commercial center could look like. This plan includes a convenience store with fuel stations, a potential restaurant with a drive through potential retail and medical offices, as well as a potential fast casual restaurant. Though the buildings are labeled on the concept plan, those are the anticipated uses and what served as the basis for the highest traffic generators and outlined in the traffic impact analysis. However, the applicant is requesting for all uses allowed in the community business district, except for those specifically prohibited in the proposed condition. The projected stormwater pond is located on the site. And additionally, the applicant has proposed a public access easement along Carolina Beach Road and sidewalks along North and South Seabreeze Road and throughout the development. This concept plan shows the extension of the sidewalks and the five foot of additional buffer which are included as conditions. Access to the site is along South Seabreeze Road and North Seabreeze Road. Generally, most traffic would enter the site at the signalized intersection of Carolina Beach Road and South Seabreeze Road. The North Seabreeze Road access point allows traffic to exit the site and travel north on Carolina Beach Road. There are four projects under development in the vicinity. This slide depicts the estimated trip generation for the site. The proposed development would generate approximately 389 a.m. and 284 p.m. peak hour trips, an approximate increase of 376 a.m. trips, and an increase of 267 p.m. trips compared to current zoning. The estimated traffic generated from the site is over the 100 peak hour threshold that triggers the ordinance requirement for a traffic impact analysis, or TIA. The TIA required several improvements of this development, which analyzed the following maximum square footages. 6,100 6, square feet of convenience store with fuel stations, 5,000 square foot of fast food restaurant with drive through 5,000 square foot of small office building, 7,200 square feet of strip retail plaza, and 5,000 square feet of medical dental office building. At the intersection of Carolina Beach Road and South Seabreeze Road, to construct an exclusive westbound turn lane with 100 feet of full width storage and to optimize the signal timings, to construct an exclusive eastbound left turn lane on South Seabreeze Road with 50 feet of full width storage, at the site access on both South and North Seabreeze Road to provide stop controls for exiting traffic, and to construct both site accesses with 100 feet of internal protected stems. This property is located in the historic Seabreeze community along Carolina Beach Road. This is an area that has not experienced the same interest in higher density growth as the northern and central portions of the Carolina Beach Road corridor. This area was the focus of the Seabreeze small area plan created in 1989. The recommendations for the area included a revitalization of the businesses and a redevelopment of the waterfront. While much of the surrounding area is low density residential, there are planned higher density townhomes to the south. This property's proximity to the Snows Cut Bridge along a heavily traveled corridor serves as a location conducive to this type of commercial development. 
The application proposes a condition to limit some of the uses that would be permitted in a, in a community business district to make the project more compatible with the area. The proposed commercial development provides community serving businesses in a largely residential area adjacent to a highly traveled corridor. Additionally, due to the area's location adjacent to Carolina Beach Road, it is less likely to be developed for low density housing. This project is consistent with the county's strategic plan because the proposed conditional bus community business rezoning will enable new business growth that can serve the surrounding community. The 2016 comprehensive plan classifies this area as community mixed use. This project is generally consistent with the comprehensive plan's recommendations for properties that are located in the community mixed use place type with the uses in line with the recommendations for this place type. The planning board considered this item at their January 4th, 2024 meeting and voted six to zero to recommend approval of this petition. Several members of the public spoke in opposition, citing concerns with traffic and with commercial development in a largely residential area. The planning board found it consistent with the comprehensive plan because the proposed uses are in line with the recommendations for the community mixed use place type. And the board also found recommending approval of the project was reasonable and in the public interest because the development would act as a community service business node to serve both the Seabreeze community and the surrounding area. The applicant originally proposed excluding several uses in a condition. During the planning board public hearing, the board and the applicant agreed to exclude several more uses in the conditional district. The planning board and applicant also agreed on more conditions regarding building height, sidewalks, and additional buffering behind the proposed stormwater pond in the southeastern portion of the site. Staff's recommendation is based on the policy guidance of the 2016 Comprehensive Plan, zoning considerations, and technical review. Staff found the proposed conditional CB district generally consistent with the Comprehensive Plan because the proposed uses are in line with the recommendations of the community mixed use place type and the development would act as a community service business node to serve both the Seabreeze community and the surrounding area. Staff concurs with the planning board's recommendation. Staff have received several additional public comments which were provided to the board earlier today. Lastly, I'll add that if approved, development would be subject to technical review committee and zoning compliance review processes in order to ensure full compliance with all ordinance requirements. This concludes staff's presentation. Mr. Tim Lowe is here with County Engineering and Scott James is here with the WMPO to answer any questions. The applicant is here and has also prepared a presentation. Thank you. Mr. Yes, sir. Chairman, I do have a question for Zach. I want to let you all know that I, as a side note here, Zach is a great runner. We ran in a 5K this weekend and won in his age group. And I'm very proud of the work he did on behalf of another county and representing those over the healing place and helping to raise awareness of those that have substance use disorders. So thank you for being there. This thank you. Zach. And with that being said, um, how many septic tanks will go on this property? Will it just be one septic tank? No, sir. This project is proposed to connect to the aqua system, so it would not be on septic. So it's going to connect to Aqua. Yes, sir. They made that determination. The Aqua has issued a letter of intent um, to connect in, and it's also a recommended condition that this development connect into the Aqua system. Will Aqua connect with others in that general vicinity? You think since they're running sewer there? Generally, that's what we've seen. Is Aqua when we get rezonings that for areas that Aqua serves, they'll issue a letter of intent. Um, that they can handle the additional strain on their system, um, but it's it's ultimately up to Aqua and the applicant. Um, but like I said, they've already issued a letter of intent for this development, um, and it is included as a condition that they have to connect into that system. That's good news. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Cindy Wolf. Good evening, thank you. My name is Cindy Wolf, and I'm here on behalf of the various owners of the nine properties that encompass this. We appreciate thank, uh, Zach's thorough summary. As he described, the subject site is located just north of the Snows Cut Bridge, um, and it's a signalized intersection of Seabreeze Road South with Carolina Beach Road and River Road. The Seabreeze North uh, Road along that northern border will provide this combination of tracks with entries to both of those uh, accesses into the whole Seabreeze community. With the adoption of the Comprehensive Land Use Plan, uh, this entire corridor was determined to be a community use mixed place type that promotes the type of development 
that residential communities, which are uh, increasing down in this part of the county, need for retail services, for services, all of those types of things for new incoming residents. The petition is to rezone this currently residential zone tract for business uses. The obvious question is always coming up, why another commercial center? And the short answer is convenience, variety, and certainly free enterprise. I think following um, with a little history of the site is important to this endeavor. Up until 2008, Snow's Cut Convenience Store operated at the Seabreeze Road South Corner with two pump islands. Historically and even now, a convenience store is permitted in residential zoning districts by special use permit, but limited in size to a single fuel pump island. The Seabreeze Neighborhood Plan, which was created back in 1988, showed the existing use of a convenience store on their maps. It included a statement that uh, exploring the possibility of developing a shopping center somewhere in the community was a strategy to address concerns over the diminishing historical focus of services in this area. By 2012, the pumps were gone, but the retail use along with uh, current moving van rentals had continued. The Mini Mart retail shop use continued. By 2019, the old pump canopy was converted to a patio for pelican snowballs, and putt-putt was added. This is not a recent project proposal. My client began purchasing these assembled parcels back in 2017 and has been extremely proactive in preparing for the future. The two 4,000-gallon underground fuel tanks were removed and any environmental concerns actively addressed. He's been cooperating with Aqua Utilities to provide additional easement area for expansion of their adjacent well area, which will benefit water service in the surrounding community. Asbestos was removed from the old house, which was originally a Freeman family residence, and it has been offered for preservation, perhaps um, as a future heritage museum on another site. A, fuel traffic a full traffic impact analysis, tree and topographic survey, marketing research, they've all been completed along with alternative layout sketches, which the best of which we believe are what we're presenting you tonight. The project plan includes not only um, the possibility of a C store, the obvious anchor of a center at any signalized intersection, but also space for additional retail, service and medical dental office opportunities, the central drive, which would connect both South and North Seabreeze Road, will not only provide good interconnectivity, but also serve to keep the more um, active circulation within the center and off of the public roads. As multiple properties along the frontage of Carolina Beach Road today, the Department of Transportation would almost have to give each of them a driveway if they were individually developed by the individual owners. This way, we avoid more conflicts on Carolina Beach Road. There are impacts that are mi being mitigated by traffic improvements. Um, as he pointed out, the project of the scope certainly required that traffic impact analysis. The final port report has been accepted, reviewed, and approved by the MPO and CDOT. The results of the analysis indicate that with the recommended improvements in place, the proposed site is not expected to have a detrimental effect on transportation capacity and mobility in the study area. At full build out, the level of service at South Seabreeze Road Signal is only impacted by an additional 10 to 15 seconds of delay during the peak periods of the day in any travel direction. We have the traffic engineer, Don Bennett, here for questions in the future pertaining particularly to that traffic analysis. Staff always ends the report by reminding you that these plans are somewhat conceptual. Release for project construction and ultimate approval for occupancy is totally dependent on oversight by the Technical Review Committee and permitting by a variety of county and state agencies. We try very hard to review and address any potential detailed design and permitting issues um, and in preparation of a good concept plan. So we also have a civil engineer here if there are questions relating to that specialty. In summary, the primary emphasis in locating commercial services is to provide for proximity and ease of accessibility. That is the strategy within the community mixed use place type. 
the proposed establishments, including the possibility of view, fuel, vehicle fueling, will provide services to a mixed population of customers in this portion of the county. This proposal will improve the form and function of a currently underutilized tract along a busy highway corridor, thereby maximizing land use efficiency and good economic development. We hope you'll concur with the staff recommendation and the planning board recommendation that this is consistent for approval. Cameron Zerbrig, who's one of the development partners, has some additional comments, and then we'll all be available for questions. Thank you. Thank you. We have uh, Brian. We're still in our presentation. Okay. Okay. Uh, good evening. My name is Cameron Zerbrig, and I am acting as the development partner for this project uh, in conjunction with the owner who is uh, Richard Yang sitting behind me with his daughter and his entity is SoCal LLC, which has uh, over the last seven years assembled all of these properties. So we're not actually coming to the board with uh, a request for rezoning subject to subject to, we own the property. And I think that's a very important point. Uh, Mr. Yang committed to purchasing the property long before he ever saw it as a commercial development. He just thought it was a very attractive investment opportunity in that area. Um, before I get into my uh, brief presentation, which is really a little bit of a, of a reiteration of some of everything everyone else has already said, I do want to thank Cindy because she's done a great job of organizing for us. Zach has been extremely responsive and, um, and always helpful to us. Uh, I want to thank you know, the planning board in the past for their uh, guidance and their vote earlier. Thank the commissioners for uh, in advance for a open and objective discussion tonight. And then I also want to thank attendees who are here both for and against. Uh, we've had a lot of conversations with both over the past several months. Four areas I want to cover real quickly. One uh, has to do with just opposition in general. A second area is I, I reviewed the public comments and I want to make a few comments. Uh, existing traffic conditions are a third area and development positives, which I want to touch base on before we get into opposition and negatives. Uh, basically, I've been developing property for over 30 years now, and I think the formula for a successful development is good communication, uh, ability to problem solve, and you know to professionally deal with opposition, which always exists. Uh, Opposition in general usually presents itself uh, at these kinds of meetings and the people who support it usually don't show up, kind of just like Dane suggested earlier when he was talking about all the people in favor of stuff going on downtown, but they don't, they don't typically show up. Uh, I have followed what's been going on in Seabreeze not only through our development, but uh, when you all approved the SB Cottages residential development uh, six to nine months ago, I was here for all of those meetings. And there was a lot of opposition, but that deal was approved for, I think, on merit of the deal. Um, at our community meeting, uh, we had over 40 people, and it was a very constructive meeting, but it was mostly opposition. Um, and we talked through it for a couple of hours, and I followed up with a lot of people after that. Um, at the planning board meeting uh, a month ago, we had three people speak in opposition. I think there were several people who uh, were in the audience who didn't speak, so there were probably more opposing us at that meeting than spoke, but nevertheless, uh, we went from 40 people to three people, and I expect there'll be some opposition here tonight, and I'm not aware of anybody here uh, in favor of the deal, but I know that I've spoke with a lot of people who do uh, support the deal. <clears throat> Excuse me. When I went through the public comments, it was before the additional comments from earlier today that were forwarded. There were four uh, letters of support, if you will, one neutral and 48 uh, comments in opposition. I took the time to go through all 48 uh, opposition points and I classified them into these categories. Um, we do not need, there were three people, we just oppose, there were three people. Decreased property value, three people. No sea store or fast food, there were four people. Uh, it needs to stay residential, there were five people. No more development, 12 people, I've never heard that one. And uh, traffic issues, there were 18. 
So out of the 48, you know, a substantial number of people were no more development and traffic issues. <clears throat> I'm just going to comment on those various categories. Do not need. I don't have a, I don't have a response. Just oppose. No response. Uh, decreased property values. I actually disagree with that because I think that the uh, vacant properties that are undeveloped on North and South Seabreeze will actually increase in value if this, proper, if this property is rezoned and goes forward. Uh, no sea store or fast food. It's, to me, a classic site. It's uh, on an arterial highway at a traffic signal. It's five miles from Monkey Junction, which is where all the services primarily are. And basically what I've heard from most of the residents out there is that they don't want to go over the bridge for services. So you either go five miles north to Monkey Junction or you fight the traffic going over the bridge. So I think this site has a lot of merit for potential uh, services like Seastore and fast food. Stay residential. Uh, just don't think it's going to be residential unless it's high density, which I think could be more detrimental to the community than a controlled commercial development. Um, also, I will add, based on what we've done to remove the tanks out there that were in existence in the ground, when we went through that process with NCDEQ, and we have concluded that process almost, uh, they will limit certain portions of the property for residential because we can no longer do uh, wells or septic. We have to go, we have to connect into, uh, into the municipal water and sewer. No more development. I just don't think that's gonna happen. Something's gonna happen with this property. But the real issue really is what I've heard from everybody is traffic. And I'm just gonna comment on a few things that were in the public comments. Um, 18 of 48 comments were traffic. So 40% basically were concerned about traffic. Uh, a couple of people said too much already. We haven't even started our development, so we're not responsible for too much already. Uh, worse in the summer. Um, I live at the beach. I'm very fortunate, and uh, I think if you're lucky enough to live a half a mile from Snow's Cut Bridge, which gives you access to the intercoastal or the beach, you've sort of bought into the concept of more traffic in the summer. Uh, hard to get out of sea breeze. We didn't create that issue. Uh, can't make a timely U-turn to go north on Carolina Beach Road. This is a really critical issue for a lot of the neighborhoods because they, people across, directly across uh, Carolina Beach Road and just north on Carolina Beach Road have to come all the way down south to the traffic signal at Sea Breeze at Carolina Beach Road and make a U-turn to go north, whether it's to their home or to their business. And so this is something that we have uh, thought about and I've been talking with the DOT about and there, I don't think there's an absolute solution, but there are some corrective problems that, that uh, are corrective. There are some opportunities to correct the issue and make it better. So too much traffic and U-turn issues are existing conditions, not conditions which we have uh, really created. So. Not a lot of people think the way a developer does, uh, and that's probably a good thing, but um, I feel like sometimes a commercial development can really help or benefit existing traffic conditions. One of the ways is actually we're doing TIA improvements. Uh, we're, turn we're putting in turning lanes and restriping. We're widening the sea breeze entrance, and we're doing traffic signal modifications and optimization which basically will help everything at that intersection. Other benefits that we can create through our development, we're creating cross access through our, our property, which will make connectivity between North and South Seabreeze better, which will allow traffic to go North on Carolina Beach Road more efficiently, and also uh, effectively, oh, okay. Well, thank you very much. I'll be available for, uh, for uh, discussion later. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, next is um, Brian Gordon. And Brian, there's two of you signed up, and you have a total of 15 minutes. Okay. So just 
Okay. Uh, my name is Brian Gordon. I live at 802 Tarpon Drive in Dolphin Bay. The proposed development is less than 500 feet from my home. Unfortunately, the latest planning board hearing was around the holidays. I and others were unable to attend that hearing. Uh, as such, we submitted our public comments in lieu of attending. When I got back from the holidays, I was shocked to hear the planning board unanimously voted to approve this rezoning request. So I went and foia all the public comments thinking maybe no one wrote in. Uh, it was actually quite the opposite. Uh, as he said, there were close to uh, 48 individual comments, 60 comments, uh, um, three in support. Two of those were not even local, as you can see here on the diagram. I plotted them on the map. They're actually from Carolina Beach. You can see all the opposition points here that submitted their comments. Um, so <clears throat> you can see uh, the majority of these citizens who voiced their opposition to this rezoning request are right here in the vicinity of this proposed development. Uh, he makes the point that uh, they didn't create these traffic issues. So let's just disregard all those public comments and move forward with this project is what he's saying. Um, on Sunday, January 28th, I started a petition online. You can find that petition uh, at open petition here. It's on my links uh, on the last page. It's the first one there. It's already got over 80 signatures. It's got over 55 public comments on it. Um, I, I implore you to please read those public comments. I don't think we have been heard this far. Uh, some of those comments I'll just summarize. Increased traffic, as he mentioned. Um, increased noise. The noise is already very bad down there um, at that bridge. Uh, we tried to sell our house actually in 2022. Um, the major complaint, it didn't sell. The major complaint was traffic out on 421 and the noise. It was too bad. Nobody wanted to come in in the back of Dolphin Bay because of that traffic out there. Um, there's increased crime between 2011 and 2020. 2021, 5% of violent crime happened at convenience stores. They're prime targets for robberies. Decrease in surrounding property values. You have houses and neighborhoods literally right across the street from this. You will walk out of your front door and you will see a fast food restaurant in front of you or a gas station. Nobody wants to move into that. That's not going to increase anyone's property value. All the residents surrounding this site utilize individual groundwater wells, many at shallow depths. We should be concerned about impervious surface runoff with elevated levels of pollution due to the high volumes of vehicle use, um, <clears throat> fueling and fluid top-offs that occur at these fuel stations, proximity to wetlands and the waterway coupled with private residential wells are concerning. The same could be said for the volumes of vehicles utilizing drive through restaurants, cars queued up in the drive through leak drip fluids, they burn gasoline, creating pollution and greenhouse gases. There are tons of articles online about the environmental concerns of drive throughs and they want to put this right in the middle of a neighborhood. There has been no community input on this. They did have a meeting. It's just a box check. There were about 40 people there, and they've come up with a gas station and a fast food restaurant. The 40 people there were 100% opposed to a fast food restaurant and a gas station. I couldn't attend. Vacation, holidays. Um, more comments, this is regressive development. It's short-sighted, it devalues the community. We don't need more unhealthy fast food restaurants. We don't need easy access right in our neighborhood for our kids to alcohol, vapes, cigarettes. We don't need these things. These things hold communities down. Uh, there are concern about uh, emergencies and evacuations from the island while traffic's altered at this intersection. Um, there are families on North Sea Breeze with young children who like to walk on these roads. You introduce a gas station and fast food and a strip mall, you're bringing people and traffic right into their neighborhood. This increases the danger to them. Several comments were from the retirement community opposite this development. Uh, they already can't get out and go north to Monkey Junction in the summertime. So um, also, it is detrimental to the local restaurants in Carolina Beach in the off season. And for who, the profit of Exxon or another McDonald's? There are already nine gas stations on this road, as you can see here. There's about to be 10 gas stations and convenience stores. There's another convenience store approved and in development on the west side of Carolina Beach, just south of the Circle K at Myrtle Grove intersection. You can see the fast food on the next one. Tons of fast food up and down Carolina Beach Road. Tons of it. Don't need more. 
I've also been awa made aware by a neighbor that New Hanover County is starting its compre comprehensive plan update in 2024. According to the NHC website, this plan serves as the official guide for decisions about land development and rezoning outside the city limits. The website says the um, the website says public input will be an important part of the process and numerous engagement opportunities will be held beginning in 2024 to receive the community feedback. This sounds like the perfect and appropriate forum for this conversation. Finally, the closest planning board member resides 8.5 miles from the proposed site. This development does not impact them whatsoever. The closest commissioner lives five miles from this site. The local community in Seabreeze does not feel like our voices have been heard this far. I would ask and implore you at this point to oppose this rezoning request. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I'm just gonna say the first name, Alice. Uh, I am not gonna try that one. Um, hello, my name is Alice Sue. I am a resident of Seabreeze at 7601 Scout Camp Hatilla Road. Um, and I would second this other gentleman's um, uh, comment regarding the difficulty of actually providing a public comment. Um, I emailed my comments to the board this morning because we tried for days to try to log a comment online and there was no link to actually provide the comment. So I apologize for emailing it sort of last minute, but there was no other option. Um, I do not know when the community was advised of the, com of the community meeting and we were also away for the holidays for that first planning board meeting. Um, so, um, you know, we'd like to be open-minded uh, regarding this rezoning and in general, I think that um, at least my family does believe that development is a good thing. Change can be fantastic. And I think that there's a lot of things that Seabreeze needs as a community that could be provided. I just don't think that the steps have been taken um, to make sure that there is a solid relationship between the developer and the community in order for the, these things to happen. So, um, you know, we, we'd like to view this as an opportunity for meaningful change that will benefit all interested parties. Um, and we'd like to ask the board um, to take necessary steps to maintain stringent guidelines so that development will truly be of benefit, not just to the Seabreeze community, but also to the image and the reputation that New Hanover County, um, Carolina Beach, Wilmington, all are trying to build. And that's as a forward thinking, socially conscious community and a destination that can balance sustainable development with environmental stewardship. Um, but in this case, the proposed zoning uh, rezoning presents multiple negative and irreversible impacts to the Seabreeze community, as well as precious natural resources located immediately behind and downstream of it. Um, and, uh, you know, I sent a letter detailing our perceived impacts of this commercial development within the conditions that currently exist at the site. Um, and these include a traffic bottleneck, obviously, that is going to occur as a result of, you know, this degree of this, this intensity of commercial development, um, exacerbation of envir environmental hazards, um, such as you know, the installation of those underground fuel tanks to serve 15 fueling stations. Um, and there's been no description of community protections or recourse um, because the plan submitted has been conceptual. And it's always been the fallback to um, any concerns or criticisms regarding the plan that's been submitted is that it's conceptual, but at the same time, they're also asking for full approval of all of a very broad range of conditional uses. And that I think is pretty concerning. Um, this development also um, raises the concern for exacerbation of drainage concerns. Um, you know, they point to a stormwater pond for which we're not aware of where the outlet would be, but it is to the waterway. Um, I actually took a walk this morning with my dog to just get pictures of the ditches or the swales around this location. There has been no rain, no storms, it's not high tide, it's 144, and you can see that these ditches are full of water. Um, and I don't know if I can just give this. So you can see in the pictures, there's standing water on properties. Um, I think that's actually the aqua 
wellhead that has standing water present. Um, and the outlet, the outfall pipe is covered in water at this point with really no, no reason for that, for that to be the case. So ultimately, um, I think the other concern is that providing approval for this rezoning really results in a drastic loss of leverage for the Seabreeze community in terms of making sure that the necessary infrastructure regarding sewer and water actually comes to this area, and it's necessary. Um, in light of these impacts, we would respectfully ask the board to focus not on the form of the developer's proposal, but really on the content and the impact. The pro proposed site plan is purely speculative. Um, so, you know, some of the things that I think really need further discussion is to really consider proposals for mitigation of harms. Um, you know, one of those would be provision of water and sewer infrastructure. Um, to all properties within the Seabreeze community. Many homeowners within this region lack the knowledge and resources to fund extension of pipelines um, to their properties, and it seems like a reasonable trade-off to encourage or request the developer, perhaps in cooperation with um, New Hanover County or Aqua, to provide supply lines at least to the front of property lines, if not into the homes themselves. Um, giving residents the option of connecting to that infrastructure brought by the commercial developer will vastly benefit the community, the waterway, and likely the utility provider as well. Secondly, um, I think you know, what needs more focus is concerted attempts to mitigate the traffic congestion at relevant intersections. Um, you know, one, one way would be to make primary ingress and egress into, development, uh, into the development directly off of US 421 um, and not rely on Seabreeze North and South, and that would help to alleviate existing and anticipated pressures um, from existing homes, as well as the development that was just recently approved, bringing those you know 50 or so townhomes into um, you know into that service road that also um, outlets into that intersection of South Seabreeze and US 421. Um, in addition, or if that egress is not allowable for whatever reason. Um, the developer could cede sufficient land along the southwest or northwest boundaries of the parcel in question um, to allow expansion of the roadway at the Seabreeze and Carolina Beach Road intersections extending to the primary ingress and egress out of the development. Um, and this expansion would ideally provide dedicated left turn only in the lanes at the ingress and egress locations as well as the relevant intersections. So I think the big issue is Rezoning eliminates oversight. It limits community awareness, and I think that we can agree that the awareness that the community has been able to appreciate has been limited already. Um, you know, not being able to file a public comment, not being advised of the, the meeting, um, you know, having every meeting scheduled around holidays. It, it's, you know, obviously every developer is going to use, you know, every trick in the book to, to push the approval for it, and that makes sense. Um, but, you know, massive returns on investment are likely to be enjoyed by developers through rezoning, and we feel that the board has an obligation to expect and require more than satisfaction of minimum requirements established by, um, you know, by the TIA. And one, one mention, um, one thing I'd like to mention about the TIA is, and I mentioned it in the letter, is that this is based on traffic counts collected in March. Obviously, there is no way to accurately estimate peak travel in March. This is the coldest half of the year. So, you know, obviously work has to be done all year round. We understand the TIA was performed when it was requested, but I think that to move forward with approval at this point is really premature. Um, so, you know, again, you know, what I'd like to say is that the rezoning should be an opportunity for meaningful change that will benefit all parties. Um, we urge the board to reject application for rezoning today before the above items can be judiciously evaluated. Rezoning would result in a drastic loss of leverage that would perpetuate continued intentional oversight of the historical need for water and sewer infrastructure to be de um, delivered to all residents within this community. Thank you. Thank you. Applicants rebuttal up to five minutes. Thank you. I tried to 
jot down as many things as I could. Certainly, concept plans are not purely speculative, although exact uses cannot necessarily be um, identified at this stage of the game. Certainly, a plan like this, it identifies stormwater management location based upon topography, surveying, downstream uh, review. It identifies the roadway system, which we believe is a huge asset to what we're proposing, having both the frontages on South and North Seabreeze Road and that interconnection between the two. It certainly is a product of the traffic impact analysis, which identifies improvements to mitigate any impacts on what is there now. The aqua system has both water and sewer mains in South Seabees Road. So we have their commitment to serve us. We would just be providing services to those mains or onto those mains, but that certainly is an asset to this in general that there's no wells or septic system proposed for what could be nine individual developments with individual septic systems and wells. The residents across the highway don't face the highway. Um, their design of that community specifically oriented those lots inward to the community, assumedly because it's a busy highway corridor. Uh, as far as the standards and requirements of a TIA established by the MPO and the DOT, if there are further questions, Don Bennett is here to answer those. But when those studies are done, when those traffic counts are um, completed, are very specific to the process. Our planning board uh, meeting was the first Thursday in December. Granted, we've got Thanksgiving and Christmas, but it was well publicized. Um, certainly, there are opportunities to make comments um, online. I don't know what might have happened to the issue she was having today. Our planning board members, no matter where they live, are consistently fair and thoughtful in their decisions, we believe, for the entire county. I think that's why you appointed them. I believe you have to acknowledge that this stretch of highway corridor will continue to be identified by our comprehensive land use plans, whether current or future, as appropriate for transitional density, both residential and commercial. We've run into so much, um, you know, concern about new residential down here, and part of that is because the residential that's down here is using the highways to either go across the bridge or go north to get their services and their commercial um, needs satisfied. So everyone's against the residential. Commercial makes some sense for this particular location. Uh, Cameron, anything else? Thank you. Uh, before I got too long-winded earlier, I was about to, uh, yes, I was about to say something that addresses uh, the, some of the current concerns that uh, both opposition people have mentioned, and that is, as it relates to DOT. Uh, first of all, Caroline Beach Road, North and South Seabreeze roads, and the service roads are all completely controlled by the NCDOT. The county has really very little say; we have no say except that we have to do what the TIA tells us to do. And so what I have been doing is I have been lobbying the DOT for some additional improvements that I think we could make at the same time that would help with U-turns, a widening of the road, creating additional uh, service road width so that we don't have a bottleneck at the service road and, and South Seabreeze. And part of what I was going to say earlier about uh, timing is the best time for the neighborhoods west of the site and the Dolphin Bay uh, community north of the site to really lobby the DOT is when we're going through our permitting period. And we can do it in concert. And that's something that I've been stressing to everybody is, you know, let's talk about it while we're in the permitting stage. Uh, so I'm concerned about traffic. I want it to be good and I want it to be better for everybody if possible. A uh, couple of other comments, the aqua well situation with sitting water, they're constantly purging their well there. It sits. Uh, they're constantly running water out of that well, and it happens to sit there, and I know that because I've had several conversations with the neighbors to the east. Uh, talking about access again to the site, it, you know, it's actually so much better to have it off of north and south Seabreeze than it is in the middle, and in fact, the first thing I asked the DOT 
with our concept plan was could we have a curb cut in the middle and they said absolutely not because it would create more issues so i'm open to communication with everyone who has expressed opposition thank you At this point, the uh, opponent rebuttal has up to five minutes total. Anybody like to speak? Um, so we're 802 Dolphin Bay. Um, ma'am, ma'am. Yeah. Could you please state your name? For Courtney the record, please? Gordon. Um, we're 802 Dolphin Bay. We're the closest house to the bridge, and the sound reverberates already. And as my husband said, we tried to sell our house, and the main complaint is the sound. Um, and this is, you know, prior to this development. Um, I invite anyone to come and sit in my yard uh, and hear the the sound already. Um, I, I just ask that. We not go forward with this, please. Uh, my, my, my nine-year-old daughter can barely sleep at night as is because of the sound, um, and it will obviously be amplified should we add residential and um, fast food, drive-through, whatever else. It would just be way too much. So I, I ask you to you know, not go forward with this. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna close the public hearing. Is there any board discussion? I'm sorry, I, I, you weren't on the list, so I didn't know that you wanted to speak. I'm Jean Graft, and I live at 910 Cobia Lane in Dolphin Bay, um, very much opposed to this project. And one of the things they were talking about is the developer has been buying up this property over several years. Well, there's a lot of us who have already bought property there several years ago with the understanding that this is a a residential area and it is to be remain residential I really hope that you decide not to go forward with this project thank you thank you ma'am okay so at this point I'm gonna close the, the uh, public hearing is there any board discussion mm -hmm. mr. chair thank you um, Cindy yeah Thank you. Um, in the proposed usage, uh, I didn't see this spelled out. Maybe you had some discussion about it. Uh, will uh, open boat storage be allowed? No. In this? Okay. Exactly. There are no storage uses um, on the proposed list. So it will not happen? That's correct. That includes mini storage, right? Yes. I didn't see them listed on there, so. Well, but mini storage isn't permitted in the CB, the community business district anyway. Good. Thank so you. what we exempted was from the list of permitted uses in the CB, but keep in mind, this is CB, it is not B2, mm -hmm. B1, or CS. Got it. Uh, one of the comments that was made you know, in the, uh, the written comments and this may have just been a misinterpretation. It said they're taking away the U-turn. They mean they're taking away the U-turn signal. Is, that, is there a proposed change in what is existing there now? None whatsoever. The change will be the timing differences based upon the traffic being, you know, more traffic coming from the eastern access into the intersection. Mm -hmm. What Cameron referred to is the possibility of expanding sort of the U-turn bubble, which would mm -hmm. potentially take a little bit of our land if that was necessary. But as far as the timing, it should actually improve the possibility of uh, the U-turns based upon all of the movement times. But nothing's being taken away whatsoever. We're expanding turn lanes. Um, but the turn lanes that are expanding are on South Sea Breeze. Um, Cindy, you mentioned in your comments uh, that we had the tanks that were there before were removed, uh, but you, there was a passing comment about um, you know, persistent pollution that was there. I know often happens when you have older gas mm -hmm. tanks that were not double hauled or anything like that. 
is that the case there? There still is some uh, pollution yeah, underneath the ground. That I don't, I, I'm not prepared to address, but the point is we're not, use, we have done everything to mitigate through the process mm -hmm. of identifying, removing, and mitigating, and are in the finalization of that process. That being said, we're not asking for wells or septic systems. We've eliminated everything that could be in this area because of that. We're improving the aqua well system because a use like this would certainly make the water flow better, that it now is somewhat stagnant at times because there isn't enough requirement of the system. Um, but one of the conditions, and one that we've certainly accepted along with the others, is that connection to the aqua system. So we or would be on public water and sewer, public, relatively speaking. <laughs> Got it, no. Uh, the retail, the, uh, I call it, is, it's referred to as a strip mall, my words, not yours, mm -hmm. that portion of that, which is up by the, what's on the map noted as medical offices, et cetera. The back, the front sections, certainly the convenience store, as an anchor makes the most sense. We certainly believe that that's what and will potentially end up being a positive use there. The other three quadrants, if you want to call them that, are open to the market, are confined to the uses that we've agreed to and exempted. But yeah, storefront, uh, the possibilities of restaurants, the possibilities of restaurants with drive-throughs are certainly popular these days. Um, medical office we don't have down in this portion of the county. That's something that generally evolves with other residential, which is coming down this highway. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I, I, did I answer your question there? You kind of <laughs> jumped it, but uh, okay. yeah, you did. Uh, the second part of that, is there any plan to put residential on the second floor no. of any of those? We have not proposed any residential or commercial district mixed use. That would be a special use permit that would have to come back um, before this board and the process. Cindy, I know we've had a lot of back and forth before, and I know one of the issues that I uh, have asked for is to provide more retail or office type things that would actually keep traffic off the road or provide services for nearby adjacent and you've provided that with this. Uh, we certainly work. believe so. Certainly, Seabreeze residents are somewhat limited at this point. Yeah. Um, but services for this general vicinity, folks that are on River Road can come straight across. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Uh, the last question, and then I'll hold my comments, is the, um, there's the Aqua North Wellhead area that's directly to the east of this project. Are there covenants or easements surrounding that, in, uh, environmental easements, for the protection of that wellhead? Absolutely. And part of what our conversations with them and, a, and cooperation with them is we're going to be dedicating additional easement area behind that northeast quadrant use, whatever that is, to expand the, the protected area of the wellhead. So in your... Uh, structural or the, the layout of what's going to be a lot of concrete and, and or asphalted in there, drainage being drained away from that wellhead area. Is yeah, that being it taken does in? not go, the drainage, the runoff does not go there. It has to be maintained or directed to a pond on our site. But in that particular case, that wellhead goes down to an aquifer. So whether surface drainage got to it or not wouldn't be relevant but our runoff has to go to our pond, yeah. which is away from that well. I'm sorry, I did have one more. Uh, on the southeast quadrant, uh, I noticed you have an uh, opaque uh, buffer. Will that include a fence? That has yet to be term determined. The planning board recommended a condition that that buffer, whatever it was, and there are different transitional buffers. If you use a fence, it only has to be 15. If you don't use a fence, it has to be 20. We added five foot to whatever type of buffer is agreed upon. And I know Mr. Zerberg had spoken to some of the folks in that community. I think there's five owners that back up to that section of the pond. So as far as distance separation, uh, there's more than enough 
I mean, or, uh, there's uh, quite a bit as far as visibility and opacity of the buffer that can be determined, but it will be enhanced by the additional uh, distance. Those buffers work both ways. Um, so people who live in those houses going towards that, uh, the pond could in some instances be uh, considered a, an attractive nuisance, especially if it's totally fenced. You see where I'm going? Yes. Uh, would you be open to including a fence along uh, that, um, that southeastern border on the back side of those houses? I, I'm not gathering your, your reasoning for that. I mean. To put a barrier between the backs of those. Of for those what purpose? Uh, for uh, trespassing or travel, et cetera, so that people are not, um, people and children are not cutting through the buffer and then being presented with the open pond. We can certainly discuss that if you have other deliberation. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, just a quick question while mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Wolf is still there. Um, could you speak to the, um, I know we brought this up in our agenda review, could you um, speak to the right of way um, in that area and is applicant aware of the plans for a possible multi-use trail to connect to the city trail through Monkey Junction to the beach area? Yes, absolutely. Our plan includes a note and the easement across the front that that strip of land that they've asked for, which I believe is 20 or 25 feet, is dedicated, will be dedicated as part of any of our plans or plats that are recorded with individual lots. So yes, absolutely. And we have brought the sidewalks down the flanking sea breeze roads all the way to that point. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair, if there's if no you other You want to give me just, one sec? Okay. Uh, Cindy, uh, quite often I, I know that some of these back and forth can appear to be contentious uh, there, and I don't mean them you know, to be, but uh, when I see a design that has some uh, really positive effects to it, I like to bring those up as well. And I appreciate what you just brought up, which made me think of it, the sidewalks uh, that you're, you're putting in there. Uh, as I mentioned before, including uh, you know, businesses that could be used by the local community uh, in, in the sidewalks, including going down north and south Seabreeze Drive so that uh, local people have an opportunity to walk and use those and or bicycle. Uh, also, the concept of uh, not allowing more curb cuts along Carolina Beach Road. Uh, these are all small things that go into a design and a conceptual, and I, I want to appreciate that because that would have been it was a potential if these lots had remained open for individuals to have multiple curb cuts on Carolina Beach Road. Um, and, and I know there's some, maybe some disagreement about the positiveness of the cross-cut road, the cross-cut road through the development. In my mind, I think that's a very positive and a, and a good creative way in, in designing. So I certainly I believe so. Thank you for those. <laughs> Before we proceed with the vote, I would like to ask, like to invite the applicant to the podium based on the board discussion and items presented during the public hearing. Would you like to withdraw your petition or proceed with the vote? We'd like to proceed, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I just want to bring up one issue that is uh, con a continuing frustration is the, the lack of looking at what I'll call this uh, upstream projects that we've approved and the uh, impact of traffic that it will have in the aggregate, in this case, all centered around that one signal at South Seabreeze. Uh, there is no doubt that that's going to be a really difficult intersection, as it already is uh, during the summer months, uh, which, you know, we like to think are just a couple months. In our area, it's almost a six-month period. Uh, and I know Commissioner Pierce knows this more painfully than, than most of us having to go down there. Uh, but none of this is as a cause of this particular project. 
Maybe it already exists. This is going to simply add to it. But I, I just wish there was a way that we could consider all of those projects and the amount of traffic that's coming, uh, in this case, south towards uh, the Stowe's Gut Bridge. Well, one, one thing is that, that project is going to keep a lot of people from getting on Carolina Beach Road. Mm -hmm. Lots of people. Everybody that lives back there. Mm -hmm. They have an option of where to go versus getting on Carolina Beach Road and going wherever. I see what, I know what you're saying. Yeah. We've talked about this. But yeah. I think this particular one is going to keep a lot of people off of Carolina Beach Road. I agree with you, Bill. Uh, but one of the comments that's made here was also included in a lot of these here was the noise issue, which is something that uh, developers, as we you know, continue moving forward, it's a real concern. And I hear what this uh, young couple here was saying. They have difficulty you know, getting their children to sleep because of the noise. Again, not as a part of this project, but we know that as a, a continuing issue as more and more traffic builds up on Carolina Beach Road. And, 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 uh, uh, and, and one of the comments made was, um, I was told when I bought this house mm. that we would not have anything like what we're talking about. And nobody can guarantee that. Mm -hmm. I would suggest you go back to your realtor and talk to them, but there's not any way you can control what's gonna to happen to the property around you. I understand exactly what you're saying, Rob. Yeah. But there's two sides of it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Anybody else? Jonathan? Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the rezoning. I find it consistent with the purposes and the intent of the comprehensive plan because of the proposed uses are in line with the with the recommendations of the community mixed use place type, I also find approval of the rezoning request as reasonable and in public interest because the development would act as a community service business note to serve both Seabreeze community and the surrounding area. Um, I will also include the seven proposed conditions. Do I need to read those? Seven proposed conditions. Specific excluded uses will include electronic gaming, outdoor recreation, commercial parking lot, car wash, vehicle rentals, minor vehicle service station, artesian manufacturing, commercial recycling facility, animal shelter, kennel, hotel, motel, event center, indoor recreation, funeral services, microbrewery, and micro distillery. Number two, right, right now. exterior lighting including Luminance, including security lighting for non-residential, multifamily, and mixed-use development adjacent to single-family residential subdivisions shall be cut off. Fixtures that are directed downwards in compliance with figure 554C, full cutoff fixtures of the Unified Development Ordinance. In no case shall lighting be directed at or above a horizontal plane through the lighting fixture. Number three, a connection to the public or private water and sewer utility provider is required. Private wells and septic systems are not permitted. Number four, if a convenience store with fuel stations is developed on the site, it must be developed adjacent to the Carolina Beach Road. Other uses in the conditional district not specifically excluded in condition number one may be, pre may be permitted adjacent to the Carolina Beach Road or to the rear of the project. Number five, buildings on the east side of the internal drive shown on the concept plan shall be limited to two stories or 35 feet. Number six, sidewalks will be extended along the entire frontage of North and South Seabreeze Road. Number seven, an additional five foot vegetation buffer, buffer width will be added to the applicant selected type A APEC buffer option along the Southeast property line. Madam Vice Chair, could you, include, could you include in your motion that last paragraph underneath the seventh condition if you're, I'm sorry. you're agreeable to that? Um, approval is subject to the applicant signing an agreement, acknowledgement, the applicant's consent to all listed conditions. If the applicant does not provide a signed agreement within seven business days from the date of approval, then the rezoning application approval is null and void. 
for a second. I second the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Four to one. Okay, last but not least, request by Cindy Wolf with Design Solutions Africa to resume approximately 0.44 acres in B2 regional business located at 1132 Seapreeze Road to CZDR7 residential for a maximum of two single family detached residential dwellings units. Um, this is a public hearing. We will hear a presentation from staff. Then the applicant and any opponents will each be allowed 15 minutes for the presentation and an additional five minutes for rebuttal. Thank you, sir. Hello again. Thank you, Chair and members of the board. The applicant is requesting to rezone approximately 0.44 acres from the B2 Regional Business District to a conditional R7 residential district for a maximum of two single-family dwelling units. The site is located at 1132 South Seabreeze Road and was originally zoned B2 in 1971. At the time, the purpose of the B2 district was to encourage business development in the historic Seabreeze area. Since that time, private water and sewer services have become available to the surrounding area through Aqua. However, that service line does not extend to this property. This parcel is also located within the historic Seabreeze neighborhood. Established in the mid-1920s, this area was a prime vacation resort for African Americans within southeastern North Carolina from the 1930s to the 1950s. The aerial photography shows the site is bordered to the south by an existing bed and breakfast, and this site is on the banks of the intercoastal waterway. Here's an aerial photo of the site with images of the property from different angles. Here's an example of what you might see in a small-scale commercial development. And here are examples of development in the R7 district and of other residential development along South Seabreeze Road. The applicant's proposed concept plan includes a maximum of two residential units arranged on two lots on the property. This plan also shows the location of the two large live oak trees which are intended through a condition to be preserved on the site. Access to the site is along South Seabreeze Road. If the project is approved, there is a recommended condition for a shared driveway cut across the lots. There are four projects under development in the vicinity. The estimated traffic generation for the site is very low and would result in a reduction of traffic counts from its current zoning designation. Based on the current general student generation rate, the potential increase would be negligible for this development. This generation rate is updated on an annual basis using actual student numbers provided by the school system and provides a countywide picture of the number of new students each new residential unit is likely to yield, taking into account that most new residential units in the county do not provide homes for large numbers of school-age children. This property is located in the historic Seabreeze community along South Seabreeze Road, which connects out to Carolina Beach Road, a principal arterial highway. This property is on the intercoastal waterway. This area was the focus of the Seabreeze Small Area Plan created in 1989. The recommendations for the area included a revitalization of the businesses and a redevelopment of the waterfront. However, this revitalization has not been accomplished since the adoption of the plan. There is a proposed commercial development at the entrance of Seabreeze. Due to the size and shape of parcels in the area and B2 regulations, development of this and surrounding parcels would be challenging. Given the need for private wells and septic systems and or the extension of the Aqua Main Line, this area has not experienced the anticipated commercial growth intended by the original B2 zoning. Additionally, the property is wholly within the VE Coastal High Hazard Area. While this proposal would increase the county's housing supply, those new homes would be in the flood zone which the county strategic plan aims to reduce. The 2016 Comprehensive Plan classifies this area as community mixed use. This project is generally consistent with the Comprehensive Plan's recommendations for properties that are located in the community mixed use place type. The Planning Board considered this item at their January 4th, 2024 meeting. The Board did have concern that the rezoning could restrict the ability of adjacent properties to develop without requiring a variance. There was general board agreement that the lot was suited for residential uses, but the board concurred with staff that the specifics of the lot made it challenging to develop. 
The board voted five to one to recommend approval of the petition, finding it generally consistent with the comprehensive plan because it provides housing in line with the purposes and intent of the community mixed use place type. The board also found recommending approval of the project was reasonable in the public interest because the proposal would benefit the community by providing more housing options. The planning board recommended approval with four conditions related to tree preservation, restrictions on additional dwelling units, driveway access, and a deed disclosure for future owners regarding the surrounding B2 zone properties. Staff's recommendation is based on the policy guidance of the 2016 Comprehensive Plan, Zoning Considerations, and Technical Review. Staff found the proposed conditional R7 district generally consistent with the comp plan because the district is in line with the uses that are appropriate for properties located in the community mixed use place type. However, the existing conditions of the site, including the VE coastal high hazard area flood designation, the large live oak trees on the site, and surrounding remaining B2 zone parcels make this parcel challenging to develop. Additionally, one of the county's goals is to limit residential development in flood prone areas. As a result, staff does not concur with the planning board's recommendation and recommends denial of the proposed development. However, if the board finds approval, approval appropriate, staff agrees with the recommended conditions to protect some features of the site. Staff have received additional public comments which were provided to the board earlier today. Lastly, I'll add that if approved, development would be subject to zoning compliance review in order to ensure full compliance with all ordinance requirements. This does conclude staff's presentation. Mr. Tim Lowe is here with County Engineering and Scott James with the WMPO to answer any questions. The applicant is here and has also prepared a presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, I just had a quick question for Zach. Uh, Zach, did you uh, go down and walk this site by any chance? Yes, sir, several times. Okay, good. Uh, you know, I had the opportunity over the weekend to do the same. I counted four large live oak trees uh, on that property, and, and yet we only are discussing two. Was there thinking or discussion about that within the planning staff? Yes, sir. We measured the two trees that are closer to the intercoastal waterway. They would be considered um, documented trees um, under our ordinance, so they they would not require any mitigation to remove. They would have to have a tree removal permit if their site remained under B2 zoning designation. Um, but if it went to residential, they would not require a permit to remove. The other two trees would require mitigation. Because of the, the size. size? Yes, sir. Holy smokes, those were large trees, but not large enough. It looked like one of them was on in the middle of two properties. Yes, sir. That one was not included. We believe it straddles the property line. Okay. Hmm. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good evening again. I'm Cindy Wolf, and I'm here on behalf of Sandra McKeithen, the owner of the property. The eastern end of Seabreeze certainly has a lot of history, and the odd shape of the overlaying B2 zoning district has always been a bit of an enigma to me, but it predates that 1988 Seabreeze area study for future land use planning. Its intent was certainly to promote the renewal of the community heritage. There are currently a mix of non-conforming residential uses, by right businesses, vacant parcels on portions of uh, the original overlay, and then along the southern boundary, I've actually been part of some of those rezonings over the years for single family residential. What is obvious though by this 2023 aerial view is that the existing businesses are not necessarily conforming to current regulations for aesthetics, as far as street yards and things like that that would be part of businesses if they were to develop these days. Um, but they are also not the type to promote neighborhood services or commerce. Business placement here is at the end of the community. Unless it were a specific destination use, it would certainly be difficult to establish a business out here on the east end of Seabreeze. And I guarantee that many commercial ventures would not be embraced by the community at all. The subject tract has been vacant as a waterfront property for the enjoyment of the McKeithen family with their home on the nearby Scout Camp Attila Road. Aspirations for any business user to purchase it, um, something that would enhance the community, which they're interested in if they do sell it, have not arose. The greater interest for and more neighborhood friendly use would be residential. The requested rezoning would allow the lot to be built upon with either one 
or two single family homes. The attendees at the community information meeting were very supportive of the residential zoning, but they did convey their desire for the existing trees to be preserved. And so that is a condition of approval that we've agreed to. In the two home scenario, the trees um, would be preserved. There is still more than adequate building envelope area on each of them for creative architecture to meet the required setbacks and still provide a very nice home. This was just a quick example of what I prepared um, with the shared driveway, the tree preservation, and a home uh, nicely sized for a home footprint. Staff's position concerning limiting residential development in flood prone areas um, and the challenges of development of this particular lot would certainly be applicable, I think, if we were talking about a project with greater density or multiple units. However, we're only requesting two conventional home lots, two modest homes. Most any business that would try to take over this property by right today would still be in the floodplain. They would by right be able to remove those trees, albeit they'd have to mitigate them, um, and hence probably have even more surface coverage than the two homes we're talking about because of the tree preservation and the sharing of a driveway. We ask that you agree with the planning board and the neighbor's support that has been submitted. I think a couple of the comments submitted under the support, non-support, were actually for the commercial project out front, not for this particular project. Um, but with the agreed upon conditions, we believe that this is the positive way to improve the evolving neighborhood. Thank you. Cindy, uh, in our work session Thursday, we found out that, that the septic tanks hadn't been approved. That's correct, not yet. What would happen here because of the preservation of the trees would be if septic and well ended up being the option that any builder would take to build on this property or any owner would take to have their builder build, um, it would be limited to a single home if it had to have a septic system and well. However, um, down Seabreeze Road South, uh, at the curve of Seabreeze Road South, Aqua Utilities does have both sewer and water in public mains. And it's my understanding from you know, my folks is that that's viable. They have been in conversations to extend those. If they want to try to create two lots out of this ultimately and have two homes built, they would have to extend those. And that's just a, a, a factor of cost in whatever they're going to do. So, so it is so an option to have Whatever public. we decide tonight is gonna to be subject to that. Okay. Is that, I mean, I'm, I'm asking you. Um, I would ask that it not be. I mean, if somebody wants to put a single house here, I believe there is adequate room for, uh, and still preserving the trees, for a septic system and well, and the adequate separation of the two. But if it's two, we acknowledge that, yes, it would have to be extended. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Cindy, uh, I've heard from the property owner that owns the bed and breakfast next door. Yes, Mr. Davis. They had reached out to Aqua uh, before about, well, about water and sewer, and they were pretty much brushed off as not being an option. Uh, on the diagram you show there where the trailers are, I actually sold that lot to the gentleman that owns the boat storage facility across. Um, and we ended up selling it at a reduced price because at that time the zoning would not allow you to really do anything with the lots based on setbacks. Mm -hmm. And so you've got trailers being stored there. And at that time I reached out to Aqua as well and they were very clear they hadn't planned on running water and sewer up there. And it kind of really hampered development, in my opinion, in that area without having adequate water and sewer. Uh, I would assume that, you know, if your folks are want to run water and sewer or connect with them, it may be wise to check with the property owner of the Airbnb there or the, or the bed and breakfast and see if there may be some type of a partnership to help across there. Absolutely. Mr. Dinkins was there at the meeting. I had spoken to his mother earlier, although she didn't come to the original community information meeting. But yes, Aqua has no desire or they don't seem to have any initiative to extend water and sewer in this area, although it would seem very logical. 
but so any extension would be at the cost of my clients and any cooperation that they do with other um, owners along that strip of land. Thank you. Mr. Chair, uh, Cindy, I know you just did a quick concept plan there of what you could fit in. Uh, how many square feet? I'm assuming you're talking about parking underneath and two stories above. Yes, yeah. because of the flood zone, these would obviously be raised. Um, these are both uh, 15 to 1600 square foot footprints, which would allow, you know, yeah. uh, two to 3,000 square foot of home. Yeah, on, combined, yeah, with the two stories, right? Yes, uh, over parking. Price point for that on the intracoastal? I, I couldn't tell you. I don't deal with the numbers. I gotta think that close to a million dollars. I would each. guess. Yeah. Do they have dock rights? Uh, that would be between them and CAMA. Those would have to be CAMA permits and the process that was is required. Mm -hmm. All right, hold on. Here, this is a little bit I easier see to the, see the, the waterfront. The neighbor next door has a has a pier and a yes, they do. Thank you. He was still in dock right next to theirs. And part of theirs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. I, 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 well, I don't know if these structures would do anything to help our affordable housing. Uh, yeah, that's well, they, they won't. Yeah. No. It'd be unaffordable housing. <laughs> but certainly the Bowen study has oh, no, no, shown no, no, the no. deficit for all the all houses, all I, the values. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I would just like to say that when we vote, if we vote to approve this, that it's for ever how many septic tanks mm -hmm. and wells that we can put on that piece of property. Mm -hmm. If it's just for one, it's one house we're voting on. If it's two, it's two houses. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah I, I agree. The, 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 the I the don't understand water, what you're asking. Uh, Ma'am? I didn't understand what you're I, asking. Uh, well, when we vote. I mean, what, what we've got here is for you to put, you got two lots. Correct. If that, those two lots will not handle two septic systems and two wells, then we're only voting on one lot. That's what the result would be, yes. Okay, I just, I, I just want to make sure everybody understood that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Uh, the other option, Mr. Chair, is that if Aqua would run it, but what I'm hearing from Commissioner Barfield, uh, th there's a, a hesitancy on their part. So the, the, the water and sewer issue has to be resolved before any building happens of any kind. <laughs> I agree. Uh, there. Mr. Chairman, I don't think we need to condition that. I think that the health department yeah. will make that determination on what can go on each lot. It would be uh, impossible to get two septic systems and two wells with the required separations. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, is there any opposition or any you know, public? None. Uh, I, there's a. Um, Wait, oh. yeah. Hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. I'm going to close the public hearing. Uh, now we can have board discussion. <laughs> well done, Mr. I'm Chair. Yes, you are. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, the issue, uh, I think I'll call it uh, condition number four, the variance issue. It was another thing that uh, we talked about at uh, agenda briefing, and I still find that if my reading of it, and Cindy, I'll, you know, uh, again, help educate me. The way I read this, it looks like it's really restricting potentially what could be done with uh, both neighbors on either side because of the variance issue. Uh, almost one way to look at it is it puts a cloud on their ability to be able to build out in the B2 with, you know, unless the new or the owners of property you're talking about there provides a variance. And uh, I mean, uh, I don't know, I don't know how you could do that, you know, legally. So tell me. I guess the conversation went, um, We've already got homes on both sides of us. Mm -hmm. uh, so obviously those folks have not come out to argue anything that we're trying to do here. Um, the other is a few years back down 
further where in that southern southeastern portion of the old red B2 section, uh, they actually took the zone, they stopped, they continued the zoning five feet into the new residential lot. That could be an option, and that's certainly, it would just, it wouldn't affect us if that was the way to go. Um, we have seven foot setbacks. So there's a variety of different ways to skin the cat, but ultimately we believe that most of these properties will either continue to be residential or will turn residential formally. The difference is the two residents, the one is technically a bed and breakfast, so it meets the criteria of the uh, business zone. The other is a home that's non-conforming in the business zone. If there weren't already homes there, I think we'd have more of an issue. But we were willing to um, agree to that uh, condition and the staff came up with the wording, which I think Rebecca can address. Thank you. And I did want to make sure it was clear is that the condition does not put the, um, the requirement for a variance on the adjacent properties. The variance requirement is placed on the adjacent properties because of what is in our zoning ordinance. So the variance that would be required would be from our Board of Adjustment. The condition just places the future residential properties, um, property owners on notice if this were to be rezoned, that hey, your next door neighbors are still zoned commercial, and if they want to develop their property, they may have to request a variance. So it's more for their information's sake. Rebecca, what happens if that one house to the north uh, that apparently has not been lived in for, for quite some time, uh, that's taken down and developed as a business? You play out the variance scenario for me then. What would they have to do? So, um, and, and we've had some situations like this um, in the past. Um, basically what would happen is that before they get any sort of TRC approvals, they would go to the Board of Adjustment mm -hmm. and request a variance from the setback um, from these residential lots. At that point in time, there's a public hearing, um, so the adjacent properties would be notified, including the owners of the residential lots, um, and that they would probably request a reduced setback um, that the Board of Adjustment would have to authorize if they meet the requirements for that. Exactly. What, you know, I guess what bothers me is that by taking the action tonight, if we were to approve this into residential, we are uh, putting a condition essentially for variance for somebody to be able to use their property next door to the full extent of what that property could allow. It's going to require a variance on the residential. Uh, the residential owners are going to have to give them that variance or the Board the, of Adjustment? The, yeah, the Board of Adjustment would give the variance. Um, and, and I do want to mention, too, that it would not apply to features of the commercial property. For instance, you do have the commercial uses next door with, like, the boat trailers. Yeah. The, the variance would only be required from the structure setback. Yes, mm -hmm. future, yeah, moving forward. Correct. It's not going to affect, I mean, I'll turn a blind eye to the large petroleum tank that is sitting right there next door, uh, right on the street. Uh, I'm not sure how that. There are a lot of nonconformities in this area. <laughs> it, well, it seems dangerous to me, but um, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about the effects of this. So, so just a comment, Rob. Yeah. She's right. There are a lot of nonconformities in that whole area, which is why I think some of the things we've heard tonight are really good for the Seabreeze area to redevelop that area and bring something to the community that has not been there in the past. And I, I see a lot of positive things we've heard here tonight. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ma'am. Ms. Wolf, before we proceed with the vote, I want to invite you, the applicant, to the podium based on the board discussion and items presented during the public hearing. Would you like to withdraw your petition or proceed with the vote? We'd like to proceed, please. Do I hear a motion? I'll make a motion to approve 
y'all gonna make me do this again. Okay, motion to approve the rezoning. I find it consistent with the purposes and intent of the comprehensive plan because it provides housing densities in line with the community mixed use place type. And I find recommending approval of the rezoning request as reasonable and in the public interest because the proposal would benefit the community by providing more housing. Re recommended conditions. Number one, both live oaks on the property will be preserved as part of the development. Number two, no accessory dwellings will be permitted on these lots. Number three, there will be one driveway cut across both lots. Number four, due to the setback requirements for commercial uses adjacent to residentially zoned property, future developments of adjacent commercially zoned parcel may require variances. A disclosure shall be included in any future deed for the parcel subject to this rezoning stating adjacent parcels may seek variances to reduce setbacks or other development requirements to allow for future commercial development. Approval is subject to the applicant signing an agreement acknowledgement of the applicant's consent to all listed conditions. If the applicant does not provide a signed agreement within seven business days of the date of this approval, then the rezoning application approval is null and void. Is there a second? I'll second it. Got a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Five votes. Okay, there are no um, no additional comments from the public. Mr. Kugre. Okay. We're adjourned.